Today's topic is about inhibitor of translation. Translation means simple protein formation and this protein is most important molecule for the growth and maintenance of any cell either in eukaryotic or prokaryotic. So modern medical practice is heavily dependent on the use of the antibiotic. These antibiotics are of two types, <coughs> bacteriostatic and bactericidal. They generally act only on bacteria and non-toxic to the human being. So that's why antibiotic is not dangerous to our cell. This is because mammalian cell have 80s ribosome while bacteria have 70s ribosome. So mostly these antibiotics are based on this 70s ribosome. Further in detail we will look this reversible inhibitor in bacteria. In this reversible, this type of antibiotic will work as a bacteriostatic means that molecule is given then for the growth of bacteria will be inhibited. So one molecule that is tetracycline binds to the 30th subunit of bacterial ribosome and so inhibit attachment of amino acid tRNA to the A site of ribosome and this process is most important for the incoming of a new amino acid as per the genetic codon over mRNA and that will be inhibited. Chloramphenicol that will inhibit the peptidyl transferase activity of bacterial ribosome and so further protein formation will be stopped. So chloramphenicol that will also work as a bacteriostatic. Erythromycin and clindamycin prevents the translocation process. So that is most important process again in this translation. So basically tetracycline, chloramphenicol, erythromycin and clindamycin they are able to stop this protein formation and they are working as a bacteriostatic antibiotic. Another type of antibiotic based on this irreversible inhibitor of translation in bacteria. So these antibiotic are permanently attached means irreversible inhibitor. So they are working as a bactericidal. They are able to kill the bacteria. Streptomycin and all other aminoglycoside antibiotics binds to 30th subunit of bacterial ribosome permanently or once it is attached they will not reverse. They cause misreading of mRNA and at high concentration they completely inhibit the initiation complex formation and totally inhibit protein formation. So protein is not available in the bacteria and that bacteria will be die. One more thing that is inhibitor of protein synthesis in eukaryotic. It is most interesting is that they are not suitable for clinical practice but they are used as a research tool. One molecule that is puromycin is structurally similar to the tyrosine tRNA and gets attached to the A site of the ribosome. So the incomplete peptide is released. It acts both in bacterial and mammalian cell. So this molecule is generally used only for the research tool not suitable for the clinical practice. Further, cyclohexamide inhibit peptidyl transferase in 60S subunit which is particularly mammalian larger subunit of the rRNA and it act only on the eukaryotic cell so it is also not utilized in a clinical practice only for the research tool. Further inhibitor of protein synthesis in eukaryotic here one clinical condition is given that is diphtheria toxin which is liberated by the bacteria cornibacterium diphtheri causing the inactivation of elongation factor 2. So this elongation factor 2 that is needed for the translocation process. How it is inhibiting? Attachment of ADP to the elongation factor 2 and consequent inhibition of protein biosynthesis in mammalian system. So what are the signs and symptoms are occurring based on this mechanism? Elongation factor 2 is not working so particular cell is not able to form protein. Further in detail inhibitor of transcription so what are the inhibitor of transcription so are also in turn inhibit translation process simple precursor reaction is not working or previous reaction is not working then further next onward reaction is not also not able to able to perform in the cell so simple transcription is not occurring so translation will not occur in our body or in our cell or in any bacterial cell so inhibitor of transcription are also in turn inhibit the translation process so this inhibitor of transcription are also able to work as a antibiotic so that's all are the most important part of the inhibition of translation